Danny said, my name is Jake. Um, I have the privilege of working here as one of the junior high associates. So I work here full time and then I have the privilege of being here every Wednesday and Sunday. So I haven't, if I haven't got to meet you yet, I want to meet you. And so come, come say hi to me afterwards. Wow, tongue tied already. Um, as Danny mentioned earlier, we have the winter retreat coming up in like a month. I think like a month from today or something. So get signed up. You're not going to regret it. Have your parents check their emails because that's where the sign-up link is. Or you can go online to the link that Danny told you earlier. I don't remember it. I'm going to pray. Lord, I love you. Um, thank you for this night, Jesus. Thank you for all the students that showed up. God, thank you for the leaders that showed up tonight. Jesus, you're, just, you're welcome in this place. We love you and we praise you. And I give this night to you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so I know you guys are going to react to this. So who... Who here loves studying for tests? Anybody? Really? Wow. All right. So that is the opposite of what I'm like. If you're anything like me, you do not like studying. You don't like reading. You don't like homework. You don't like school. And that's OK. That's not a bad thing. Um, but me personally, I was like a super, super average student and just was not very good at school. And it wasn't because I wasn't smart. I just simply didn't like school. And I didn't really care about it enough to try. Um, so I would just do enough work to pass the class. I'm not saying do any of this, this stuff, like try in school. It'll, it'll work out for you. But I would just do enough to pass the class and, and get through. Um, and that was about it. Even during my time in college, I would literally just show up and be like, I don't want to be here. So I'm not going to do as much work that has to get done. And so I'll just kind of slack off and not pay, pay any attention unless it, it was a class that I, like, truly enjoyed and loved. So I'm a total history nerd, so I would pay total attention in, like, history and English class because I loved it. And I was all ears, and I would finish with high grades and ace almost all the tests and quizzes. And in English class, I wasn't a big reader, so I didn't like reading, but I loved to write, and it came naturally. So writing papers and all that was, was easy to me. And I still love writing. It's a great way to to get your emotions out, get your feelings out, and just write down what you're thinking, what you're going through. But now if it was a class like science or like math, don't even get me started with that. I just didn't even try because numbers just are not for me. So I would show up and just literally not even want to pay attention. So the test would come around and I would study, but my studying was just I would read for some, do something called reading. I don't even know what I would do. And I would say I'm good for like 30 minutes and then the test would come around and I'd bomb it and get low grades and would have to stay after and get extra help. Just get this passing grade and then i move on. So I'm not embarrassed of it because I know that I'm not alone in it and school isn't fun, it's hard, but we gotta do it. But when it comes to something that we're passionate about and something that we really care about, we'll dedicate time, effort, energy, our emotions, and sometimes our lives to master and to grasp a concept that we really love. So for those who weren't here last week, on Wednesday or on Sunday, we're in a new series called Training Grounds. And Training Grounds is about the basics of our faith. And last week, Danny talked about prayer. So this week, our message about, is about scripture. How scripture plays a major importance in our Christian faith. And we need scripture. We need God's word. And the crazy thing about scripture and prayer is that they like perfectly coexist with each other. And you have to have both. And we desperately, desperately, desperately need both. God's word is the fuel to our faith. And prayer is the connection to God's word and the connection to God personally. So praying and read the Bible, praying and reading the Bible doesn't simply make God love you more. But doing both of these increases our love, increases our awareness, increases our experience of God's presence here on this earth. And earlier today when I, was, when I was preparing this message, Danny and I were talking through it. And I was trying to figure out the best way to communicate the importance of prayer and reading God's word. And he put it into a really good perspective that was really tangible for me to understand and kind of comprehend in my own heart. So he compared it to my marriage. So he, he, he was like, how can you as a husband properly love your wife, Kate, by simply just telling her that daily, but never actually spending any time with her? In that in order... In order for me to properly love her, I need to spend quality time with her. I need, to, I need to listen to her. I need to be intentional with when I talk to her. And when she does talk to me, I have to listen. And I have to really pay attention to make sure that we're on the same wavelength and that I have to connect with her actually in person. 
if there's no action behind your love, then there is no real love. You cannot love Jesus wholeheartedly if all you do is just talk about things but never actually internalize them. You must spend intentional, devoted time with the Lord. So tonight, I'm going to be preaching from the book of 2 Timothy. So if you guys have your Bibles, go ahead and flip to 2 Timothy chapter 3. We're going to start in verse 16, and we're going to do verses 16 and 17. So I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard this passage before. Um, It's a pretty popular one. So once I see that most of you guys have it there, I'll get it. I'll get it going. All right, so 2 Timothy 3, chapter, or chapter 3, verse 16. From my Bible, it says this, All scripture is inspired by God and useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. All right, so... Now, I could just read that passage and call tonight because those two verses give pretty much all the answers as to why Scripture is important. And first, right off the bat, in the very opening sentence of verse 16, it says that it is inspired by God. Everything that is written in the Bible is inspired and was written by the authors through personal encounters, through personal stories and accounts with through the Spirit of God and personally one-on-one with Jesus. It is all inspired by him. We see in John chapter 1, verse 1, the Apostle Paul writes, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So literally, from the beginning of time, our scriptures have been based around the person of Jesus. Now, the, the Bible is God's Word to us. It is God's word from heaven taken and put onto paper for us to read and for us to, to devote ourselves to. It's a guide for our lives. It tells us how to live, how to follow Jesus, and it reveals our, our deep, deep inward character. It shows us who we really are, but most importantly, it reveals our brokenness, and it ultimately reveals that we are all in desperate, desperate need for a Savior. And it's not just a book of of rules and regulations. And sure, there are quite a bit of things in there that that we definitely must follow. But this book is more than that. It's a love letter from God to his people. It's a story from the beginning of creation until the end of time about a Savior that is coming to set his people free. It took over 1,500 years to write. It was written by around 35 to 40 different authors. It contains 66 books that all write about one common theme, and it's Jesus. Now, in the Old Testament, we see that there's, like a, lot of, there's a lot of prophecies. There's a lot of spoken things about this coming Messiah, the Savior that everyone's awaiting. And then finally, when the New Testament happens, he's here. It's Jesus. The Savior arrives In the first four books of the New Testament are called the Gospels, the Gospels of Jesus Christ, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And they're all the firsthand encounters of Jesus' life, his ministry, his death, and his resurrection. They're what our faith is is based around. The rest of the New Testament is is a compilation of books that were written to the churches in the time, mostly written by the Apostle Paul, And these books address flaws in the churches, and they give the guidelines of how churches are supposed to be operated and supposed to be ran according to God's command. And the book of Revelation is the final book of the Bible, and it's a book about the end times. The time that Jesus makes his triumphant return, saving all of his followers and putting an end to Satan and all of the evil in this world. The Bible is literally all about Jesus saving his people, and he is the one central theme from the beginning to the end. Something that I want all of you guys to know tonight is that simply knowing scripture is not going to save you. Simply knowing scripture does not guarantee your salvation. You can read it. You can go to Bible studies. You can go to Sunday schools. You can come here on Wednesday nights. You can go to church on Sunday mornings. But just doing that doesn't save you. You might even be able to quote a lot of verses and say you know a lot about the Bible. It's almost like what I talked about earlier in school. You think that you know the material that you learned. You can talk about it. You can tell your parents, yeah, I learned this, this, and this. But unless you internalize it and believe it and memorize it, when the test rolls around, you will not see 
success. So if you, in the same way, if, you do, if, if all you do is listen, you don't internalize, you will not experience the true freedom that God has for you. The truths in this book will determine the outcome of your life. This book and the words in this book are just not man-made words. They're literally words directly from God to us. So what can we do with Scripture? Now that you guys have a simple understanding of what the Bible is and what the Bible entails, what can you do with it? A passage of mine that is, that is a personal favorite comes from Matthew 4. And if you're not familiar with this story, um, it's, it's the time between when Jesus got baptized and when Jesus started his ministry. And he literally went out in the desert for 40 days and for 40 nights to be tempted by the devil. Like that's as straight up as it gets. In scripture, it literally says Jesus went to the desert to be tempted by the devil. Nobody in their right mind does that. No one would just like waltz out and be like, I'm going to go take the devil one-on-one and see how, I, see how I stand by the end of it. And that alone proves his holiness and his power. And the whole time that Jesus is there, the devil continues to attack his identity. And at one point, the devil even tempts Jesus to bow down and worship him. But he never gives in. He stands his ground. And the whole time, if you read that story, he combats everything that the, that the devil throws at him with God's word. He combats everything with scripture. And he humbles him and he stops him dead in his tracks. And he says, get away from me, Satan. This is something that all of you guys can do with knowledge of the word. When you truly internalize and believe God's word to be true, you can use it to combat the enemy's attacks. God's, words, God's word holds truth and power over the enemy. But in order to internalize it, you have to believe it. You have to believe that what's written in, in this book is true. Because when the tests and the trials of life come, what are you going to fall back on? You can't fall back on yourself. You can't fall back on your parents' faith, that's for sure. It has to be your own. You must study God's word. You have to read it. You have to read into it. You have to meditate on it. You have to figure out what God is saying. And then once he tells you, what, once you think that you know what he's saying, figure out what he means by that. Figure out, okay, why, why, is, why is he telling me this? Understanding the, me, understand the meanings behind scriptures and apply it to your day-to-day life. Use it every day. We cannot just listen to what God's word says. We must do what God's word says. In James chapter 1, verse 22, it says this, but don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourselves. Read it and do it. Doing it is obedience, and God calls us to be obedient to his command. Ignoring God's word is blatantly rejecting God himself. I want you to hear that. Ignoring what God's word says is blatantly rejecting him. Study it. Internalize it. You might be asking yourself, how do I study it? What do I do now? Now that I know that I need to do all this stuff, how do I do it? So there is this thing that I learned in high school. Um, it's, a, it's a simple acronym that makes studying the Bible so easy. And it honestly makes it kind of, it's more fun because I understand what I'm doing when I'm reading it. And I can actually comprehend sometimes what's going on because the Bible is not always easy to understand. Um, the acronym is SOAP, S-O-A-P, SOAP. And it stands for Scripture, Observation, Application, and Prayer. Drew point there for a second. So Scripture, the S. What Scripture are you reading? Find that out and begin it. Begin to read it. Something that is also really helpful is to, is to start small. You don't, don't feel like you have to start in the very beginning in Genesis. Don't pick some really confusing book uh, that you've never heard of. Start in like a book like Matthew or a book like James or Philippians, something small. You don't have to read a whole thing all the way through. Just read a few verses. And then when you're done with that, read it again. Next is observation. What is going on in this passage? What, what is the author saying? What is God saying to me? What is this revealing in my heart and in my life? And what questions do I have? It's okay to have questions. Literally, Danny and I can sit down and read the Bible, and, and we'll still be super confused with sometimes what it's saying. Like, not everybody understands fully what the Bible is saying. Some people interpret it differently, depending on what they may be going through. And next, A, the application. How does this apply to my life? How can I incorporate this into my day-to-day life? How does God's word shape my heart? How does it shape my feelings? How does, how does it shape my actions? And the last one, the P, the prayer. 
Pray the scripture that you're reading. Pray the words. Use the language that is in the text. Thank God for his word. Thank God that his word has power and that his word sets us free. There's another acronym called the WAR acronym. It's Worship, Admit, and Request. Worship him for his word. Admit that you're in need of a savior and ask him to help you. So I'm going to practice this with you guys briefly. Um, So if you have your Bible, go ahead, flip to Psalm 91. Psalm is really long, so there's a lot of different chapters. So go ahead and open to Psalms 91. I'm just going to do verses 1 and 2. This is a personal favorite passage of mine, and it's been one of my personal favorites since I was a little kid. Um, it, It was one that I used to have really bad night terrors, and my dad would read it to me when I'd wake up scared in the middle of the night. And it's, it's one that I memorized that I would use in times of trouble, in times of darkness, when I was afraid. And it just brought so much peace and comfort to my life. So Psalm 91, verse 1 and 2, is this. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust in him. So now that we've read this, that, that's the first step. That's the S. So now we're going to move on. We're going to observe. So some things that I see from this passage is, is what the author is saying, and he wrote to show the significance of the presence of God. Living in his shelter, finding rest in him when we need it the most, in times of trial, in times of fear, in times of doubt, when we feel like there's nothing else for us in life and we're utterly terrified of the things around us, he is that place of refuge. He's that place of comfort. So application, how can I apply this to my life? For me, in times of doubt and fear, I know that he is my rock and my safety. So when I face those trials, when I face those struggles, when I feel like I'm all alone, I know that he will be there for me, and I can use that. And last, I'm going to pray through it. You just literally take the words that it says in the scripture and just pray them. So dear Jesus, you say that, that those who live in your shelter will be kept safe, safe by the shadow of the Almighty. Thank you that I can say that you alone are my refuge. Thank you that you alone are my place of safety. Lord Jesus, you are my God and I trust in you. So now another another thing that you guys can do when you go through all four of those steps is literally go back and do it again. Continue to ask God to reveal to you new truths in new passages or in the same one. You can pick a new one. You can stay in the same one. So that's it. That's what soap is. That's an easy way for you guys to study the Bible, and study scripture. So now what we're going to do, if you guys were here last week, uh, Danny talked about the significance of prayer and and how there's some new tangible ways that you can pray by yourself and with people. So what we're going to do is we're going to break out into small groups again. In the back, there's some Bibles. There's some sheets you guys can follow with an outline of of a study. Um, And we're just going to do that. Go with either the small groups that that you're in on a Sunday morning, Uh, Go with your friends. If you haven't been here before, just tag along in their group. But I want you guys to really sit down and do this together. It's one thing to study the Bible on your own and to try to take away and take in things on your own. But sometimes you need other people to read it with. Sometimes you need people to study with because they could bring in new insights that you haven't yourself understood. So share share about the impact of the word that you guys have Go through the study and really take it serious. I want you guys to really take it serious. And the leaders that are in here, if you guys can just kind of head up the small groups, that would be awesome. So I'm going to pray, um, and then I'm just going to bless this time that you guys have. And I kept it short tonight so that you guys can actually take, take your time on this and really go through it. So, Lord, thank you for this awesome night, Jesus. Thank you for another successful Wednesday, Lord. And I pray for all of the amazing students here, Jesus, as they just go about navigating life and navigating growing up, Lord, that they can know that they are loved, that they're cherished, that they have, that they have purpose, Jesus. And I pray that, that your word will be revealed to them when they read it, Jesus, and that you'll reveal your, your glory and your majesty. So I love you, Lord, and I pray all this in your name. Amen. So.